Hello, Dapland Radio listeners. I'm the old man of the Adirondacks, and this is Campfire Tales. More sound effects from me, because I don't know how to do sound effects. I hope you all are doing well. Today on Campfire Tales, there's going to be some stories about some of my backpacking experiences up in the high peaks. Sadly, every friend that I did these trips with has left the area. I miss those guys. We had a lot of fun together. Long time ago. We're talking almost 20 years. <laughs> But they're the best tales that I have, and I want to share them with you. I'm sitting here recording this program, and there's still a ton of snow outside. There's a little bit of snow in the forecast. Snow, sleet type stuff, nothing serious. And it's warming up. Monday, it's supposed to be 50. Gradually warmer from today till Monday. Woohoo! I got my shorts ready. Maybe not my Speedo yet, but I sure got my shorts ready. I'm sitting here with my dogs. Dogs are great company. I'm a dog guy. <laughs> I've got two mutts and I love them both to death. Both very different from each other. I've done a lot of hiking with dogs. Not so much anymore. I can't get into the woods too much anymore, at least not as far as I used to. But memories are great things to have. And I've made a lot of memories here in the Adirondacks. And I'm going to share two of them with you today. Hopefully just two. Once again, the, the half an hour monologue, I struggle with that. But here we go. My first story... is about being lost in the Dix Mountain Range. <laughs> the Dix are trailless peaks. And my friend Andrew and I decided to go up that way. And I think we were doing five peaks. Let's see, we went to Elk Lake. And we uh, decided to climb Macomb, which is trailless. South Dix, East Dix, Ho, and Dix Mountain. And from Dix Mountain, there was a trail back to our lean-to. We spent some time getting our gear together, making sure we were ready. And you, you need to remember something that Andrew and I, we knew everything about the woods. We were young, maybe a bit foolish, but certainly indestructible, as young people tend to think they are. I had a, a dog then, his name was Jake. He was a German Shepherd mix. He was just a puppy. Had one floppy ear and one ear that stood up. Eventually both ears stood up, but he was ju just a puppy. And this was his first adventure with me in the woods. And quite a few followed. He was a good dog. No leash needed. He would just stay right with us. Now up in the high peaks, I think you need a leash. And you need your dog to be on it. So my buddy Andrew and I, we drove up to Elk Lake. All excited. We got there uh, pretty much dark. And hiking in a camp or backpacking in the dark isn't isn't a big deal. I, I enjoy it. It was a marked trail to our lean-to. It was just over two miles, I think. We got out of our car, got geared up, and went to the trailhead, and there was caution tape across the trail. And signage that cautioned us not to enter. Once again, we were indestructible young adults mid-twenties somewhere, early to mid-twenties. And I can remember looking around with my headlamp and there was a, a blowdown. I don't know if it was a microburst, but there were trees down all over the place on the trail. 
thankfully, DEC or some other crew came through and with their chainsaws cleared the path. Walking through this path of trees cut on either side, I can remember looking up 10, 12 feet in the air and there were trees cut off laying on top of each other. It was just a tangled mess. Well, we ended up getting to our lean-to successfully. No big deal. Uh, we got through the blowdown. Our lean-to was clear. There were no trees down uh, anywhere around our lean-to. And our lean-to was Slide Brook lean-to. And Slide Brook was going to be our access to make a mountain. And in the dark, we couldn't really see it, but we knew it was there. And it was a brook that went up through uh, Maycomb and South Dix. And our plan was to access Maycomb through this creek, this brook that was just drainage from the mountains. There was water coming down it, and it, it was obvious that it was a, a little stream. Clear water, very beautiful. But anyway, we got to our lean-to, we ate some, hung a bear bag, and got, got situated in the lean-to, uh, having a dog that's never camped before. Um, he had always slept with me. Uh, he was, you know, just not real comfortable being in a lean-to, but eventually he settled down next to me and, and we had a good sleep, set our alarm for early, got up, ate a good breakfast, got our uh, little day pack bags together, put what we thought was sufficient food in the packs for both myself, my friend, and uh, my dog. His name was Jake. That's my, it was my grandmother's favorite dog ever. Jake was just a, an, a, an idiot. He was indestructible. He uh, destroyed cages. You, you could not keep him in a cage. Uh, just separation anxiety, very bad. Um, and he would, I had a second story apartment and I know one time he jumped out of my bedroom window second story onto blacktop. I don't know how he did it, went through the screen and ran down to my grandmother's house, which was just, just down the driveway from me. Um, and of course, Graham loved that he was there. And I was frustrated because I, I didn't know how to contain this stinking dog. Uh, he also broke through a glass window above the kitchen sink jumped down onto a roof, slid down the roof, and jumped off, and of course, ran down to Graham's. He was difficult that way, but he was, he was a good dog. But he, at this point, like I said, he's just a puppy, little floppy-eared dog, and once he got used to it, he was, he was happy to be in the woods, and he would follow me all over. So we, we packed up our stuff. I had a fleece attached to my pack, uh, just in case I got cold. And we started up this access to make a mountain. And it wasn't very long and we got into blowdown that was not cut. We uh, scrambled underneath trees on our bellies we had to climb over fallen trees that were eight, 10 feet in the air. It, it was a tangled mess of fallen trees. Uh, the power of the wind just had to be magnificent. Um, I've got another story about blowdown. Um, maybe I can share that if I have time. But anyway, it took us all morning to hike the three miles, I, th I think it's a little under three actually, uh, to the top of Maycomb Mountain. Uh, we got to uh, 
a slide and we followed the slide up and it, a, a slide is where all of the dirt and trees broke free from the rocks underneath it and slid down the mountain. I don't know when the slide happened, uh, but it, it's just rocks and ledge and you know, you're rock hopping up this steep slide. And once again, my dog Jake was right with me and he, he was in his element. Andrew led most of the way. He was in better shape than I was. Uh, it, most of the time when I hiked, everybody with me was uh, in better shape than I was. Thankfully, we didn't do this with full packs. That would have been miserable. Eventually, hours, I think it took us almost five hours to get through this blowdown to the top of Maycomb Mountain. Whilst climbing through the trees and the brush, I can rem I just remembered in the back of my mind, uh, do not enter. And we did, of course. We were indestructible kids and we were men and flexing our young muscles. Finally, we get to the top of Maycomb and we, we were going to sit down and have lunch and we did that. And we burned a whole lot of calories going up make them. Um, knowing that the trip back would be relatively easy, we ate most of our food, enjoyed the view, enjoyed the fact that we conquered make them even through all the blowdown. Now the rest of the peaks are all on a ridge. So it's just a little bit down and then back up to another peak. And that was, that was easy. It was beautiful. The views that we had whilst uh, traversing this mountain ridge were, were amazing. This was probably in August, early August that we went. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But anyway, we traversed and got to Dix Mountain. Now that's five peaks in a day. That's that's pretty good. And we were pretty much exhausted when we got to Dix. And thankful that there was a trail that went back to our lean-to. From the top of Dix Mountain, we could see where our lean-to was. We had a map. We had a compass. We also had a GPS. I had the GPS and really didn't have a clue how to use it. Note to all of you people out there, know your equipment, <laughs> know your gear, know how to use a map and compass. I knew how to use a map by itself. I could use the surroundings and orient the map, find out where I was. I knew how to use a compass. I could find north, magnetic north, and I could point the compass where I wanted to go and I could get there, but using a map and a compass together were something I wasn't familiar with. Now I know how to use a map and a compass together and I no longer use a GPS, um, largely because they're battery powered and what happens if you're relying on your GPS and your batteries die? Well, that did not happen to us. Um, I had the waypoint set for our lean-to and we followed the trail a little bit and we could look down and there was blow down in front of us. A big swath. Once again, we're climbing through blow down up over trees, crawling on our bellies down under a tree. And somewhere along the way, I lost my fleece. Very unfortunate. Um, you'll find out why in a bit. Uh, but anyway, we hiked down and got to the blowdown. And while we were going through the blowdown, we lost the trail. And at, at this point, the light is starting to fade. And I knew that we had a, the GPS to lead us to our lean to, so I wasn't too afraid. Well, we couldn't find the trail. We knew that once we got close to our lean-to, we would cross Slide Brook. 
So we could follow Slide Brook down and find the trail back to our lean-to, which it was very close to that brook. So I wasn't too concerned about it. So we hike, we eat the rest of our food. And it's a bushwhack. I don't know if any of you have been on bushwhacks before, but bushwhacks are difficult. Um, you never, you can never go in a straight line. Uh, using a compass, you can do a pretty good job. But I was relying at this point on my GPS to get us back to our lean-to. Uh, again, foolishly not knowing how to use the GPS properly. We were hiking and we're bushwhacking and we're going and going and finally it, it's dark out. We haven't crossed the stream yet and we're concerned. We uh, have food at our lean-to. We wanted to get back to it so we could eat something. Eventually, exhausted, we decided to stop for the night and do what we could to uh, stay warm. We cut a bunch of uh, little spruce boughs, laid them on the ground for our bed. Uh, the, the three of us, my friend Andrew, my dog, and myself. Uh, and we had it, we did have a space blanket with us. And I uh, laid down next to my buddy and actually spooned my friend Andrew to stay warm. Uh, it's a little embarrassing to say, but it, it works a little. Uh, certainly better than just relying on yourself to stay warm. It got down to upper 40s that night. Pretty cold. I was sure wishing that I didn't lose my fleece. Laying there, shivering, every 20 minutes or so, maybe half an hour, we'd get up and uh, try to exercise a little to warm up again, jumping jacks, push-ups, uh, just trying to get blood circulating to stay warm. And then we'd bunker down again. We did get some sleep. About midnight, the wind started picking up again. And, and being miles from nowhere, not really knowing where our lean-to is, uh, a little bit afraid after having gone through all that blowdown hoping the trees that we were near were strong enough to endure. And then we heard thunder in the background. Thunder in the high peaks is spectacular. Makes you feel really small. Started to rain. It rained pretty good. So now we're wet because we had to get up and, and do our exercises to warm up jumping jacks, thunder and lightning, fear. Uh, it, it's, it's scary being lost in the woods. And not that we were lost. We knew how to get to where we were going, get to go where we were going. We just didn't have the energy to get there. Eventually, the thunder and lightning and the wind stopped, and we were able to get a little more rest. We got up with the sun. Did some more jumping jacks. I fed my dog. Uh, I had plenty of food for him, but no more food for us. And we were running on nothing after burning all the calories yesterday. Exhausted, tired, discouraged, really, really wanting to get back to our lean-to. Uh, our warm sleeping bags were there, a change of clothes were there, food was there, and no energy to get there. So what do we do? Well, we ate puppy chow. <laughs> Truly, we ate puppy chow. I had a handful. My friend Andrew had a handful. My dog had a bowl full and he was ready and raring to go. Sitting there for a little while, we could feel the, the calories, the energy. We were thankful for that. We got up, picked up our camp, put our little packs on again, and started off looking for our lean-to or this uh, slide brook. 
Ten minutes later, we find Slide Brook. We follow Slide Brook down. Five minutes later, we're at the trail. Two minutes later, we're at the lean-to. <laughs> we were ecstatic, excited. Uh, I'm sure we were yipping and howling and uh, just happy to be where we could get warm and have some food. And I can remember just wanting to be in my sleeping bag to get warm and making food. Uh, we wanted hot food. So we got our stove going and made a meal, tried to fill our bellies, did the best we could. Satisfied with food, uh, we hunkered down for a little bit and took naps. We were all exhausted. About an hour or two later, we packed up our stuff, put our heavy packs on. And we were planning a three day, but after the night we spent in the woods, we were exhausted and just uh, ready for some a real cooked meal, not the you know, freeze dried stuff that you bring camping with you. And we knew that Noonmark Diner was two minutes from where we parked our car. So it, it, expectantly, we uh, hiked the two and a half miles back to our car, drove to Noonmark Diner. If you haven't been to Noonmark Diner in Keene, you know, stop there. Their, their pies are extraordinary. Their meals are good, neat atmosphere. Uh, go there. So we had our fill. We both had uh, something to eat. We probably had breakfast because it was still pretty early and we both had a, a big piece of pie. Uh, my favorite is strawberry rhubarb. Boy, that was rewarding. A tough, memorable, scary hiking trip that we conquered. We conquered Maycomb through the blowdown. We hiked the other four peaks, got lost, spent the night in the woods, froze our tails off. Thankfully, Jake didn't, He's, he still had his tail. I guess uh, the moral of the story is know how to use your gear. If you go in the woods and you're using a GPS, make sure you know how to use the GPS. Make sure you've got spare batteries. Keep that thing safe especially if you don't know how to use a map and compass. If I knew how to use that GPS, it would have led us right back to the lean-to. I think we ended up missing it by about 100 yards, hiked right past it, not knowing it was there. <laughs> know how to use your gear. Get familiar with the map and compass and how to use them together. Now that, that's important if you're going to spend time.